Hey gang, so this is just an introduction to the R Studio layout and some of the um, panes that uh, you'll see when you first open this. So remember R Studio is the um, free interface that we're using um, to um, interact with the R console. Um, I had previously shown you how to download um, R Studio. And if you want to check on the version that you're using, you can go to the very top in the center of this word help. Um, and you can um, click on this about R Studio. And this will tell you the version of R Studio that you're using. Uh, and if you're not sure if that's the most uh, recent version, you can uh, go just below that and do check for updates. And you should get this message you're using the newest version of R Studio if you've downloaded the newest version. So as I said, there's four panes. We'll start with this upper left one. Um, so this is the um, editor or the source script editor pane where you can um, directly enter code that's gonna be um, analyzed in R. Um, above this, so there's this uh, new file and that's this kind of page with the plus on it. You can um, select the drop down there. You can create an R notebook that might have multiple scripts in it. Uh, later in the semester, we'll go over R Markdown, where we can create documents that have code and output and plots embedded within, within them, and you can knit those into a Word document or a PDF. You can also use RStudio to create shiny web apps or this um, plumber application programming interface where you can um, interface with other types of um, programs. Uh, you can either you you can even use um, Python script and so on. And so there's a lot of functionality beyond what I'll give you in this introduction. But um, the main button that you might use here is just adding a new R script. And notice that we now have two untitled um, tabs that we can collect uh, select. Um, you might want to create an R project where you have multiple scripts that are related to some central theme. You can open existing. Um, scripts here. Um, you can save whatever um, focal tab you're working on or this multiple save button here will save uh, multiple uh, tabs at once. Um, and then there's a, a print option. Um, you can go over to this uh, workspace panes and you can change the layout and the look of all of this. I'm going to leave it as the default for now. Um, so this upper left, this is where we'll be adding some um, script in R. So for example, if you wanted to create a vector and call that vector vec1, and we can concatenate and just enter some code here. Uh, and notice that we have created some code there, but it hasn't gone into this lower pane, which is the R console. There's the um, tab, so you'll be on the console tab. There's a terminal tab there that just tells you the shell that you're working on. Uh, and then if there's multiple jobs that you've got in queue to go into the console, those will appear here in this um, jobs tab. But most of the time, you'll just be using the console. When it first opens, it tells you the R version that you're using. So um, this is um, January of um, 2021, our most recent version came out in um, October 10th of 2020. So this is 4.03. Uh, and if you scroll down a bit, you'll notice there's this, this right facing arrow and then the cursor is blinking. So our, the R console is ready and waiting for information to be passed to it. The upper right window here, we have the environment. This will show um, either uh, vectors or um, matrices or data frames that we enter into R. And I'll show you how to do that here in a, in a moment. Um, there's a history to show code that you have run in the past. There's connections to online databases. If you want to read those directly into R Studio and then process them in R, you can create connections to those on online databases. Uh, and then in this most recent version of R Studio, there's a tutorial tab where this learn R package is already installed and you can run through tutorials to kind of go at your own pace and learn some of the basics in R. So that's the tutorial tab. Most of the time you'll be on the environment. Uh, and then the lower right, so there's files that you can connect to on your computer. There's a dedicated plot tab. So I'll show you in a moment how we can create plots and they automatically come up in this lower right um, pane. Uh, you can manage the packages that you have installed. Uh, and so, for example, ADE4 
um, if we wanted to install that package, we can just click on this and notice over here in the console, the library ADE4 was run. So it automatically loads those packages for you just by selecting them here. And it tells you a description of the package and the version that you're using. Um, throughout the semester, we'll be using the internal help resources. So there's a help tab down here. Uh, and then the very last one is uh, viewer. So if you're creating web um, content or HTML content, you can uh, get an idea of what that might look like on the web by using this viewer pane over here. Okay, so um, we'll leave it on plots for the moment. That's the basic layout and some of the main things that uh, you may be using in this introduction to R. Um, and I'll just go through a little bit of code to show you how the uh, these multiple panes are related to each other as we start to program. So we're going to create this object called VEC1 that's just a concatenation of the numbers 1, 2, 6, 8, and 10. So I, um, I just entered that code there. If I want to push that into the console in R, I can select this run function here. And notice what it did was it pushed that line of code down into the R console and it ran it. And then in our environment, it created this object called VEC1. And it's telling us that it's a numeric vector uh, with um, five entries in it. And those entries are 1, 2, 6, 8, and 10. Um, so you, this um, environment will give you an idea of the dimensions of the data that you're dealing with. So for example, if we wanted to create something more complex than this vector, which is just a row of numbers, um, perhaps we wanted to make a, a two-dimensional matrix. Um, one of the things that you can easily do is just edit your code in this um, upper left pane. And, an, and a nice feature is to use the pound sign or the hashtag to annot annotate the code. So if I put that um, character in there and then I type in a note to myself, which is might be create a matrix. When I run that into the R um, console, notice that nothing happens. It, it will ignore that text that uh, or that annotation that exists there. And so this is one way of making notes to yourself without um, causing any sort of issues when you run those into the R console. So if we want to create um, a matrix, we might name that thing MAT. We'll use this left arrow uh, and then we'll use the matrix function and we'll say data is going to be equal to C and we'll go 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are the data we want to put in the matrix. And then we can just tell it that we're going to have the number of columns be equal to three. So this function matrix is going to create a two-dimensional data matrix based on these data that we just entered, where the numbers in the matrix will be nine, two, three, four, five, and six split into three columns. Okay, so we can just hit run. Notice that the code ran down here in our console. Um, and now in our environment, we have this new object called matrix. I can click on that and notice a tab opens over here to the left next to untitled where we were working. Uh, and it's showing us what matrix is. So here's vector one, vector two, vector three, here's row one, uh, and here's uh, row two. And so, and then there are the data going from top to bottom and left to right within that matrix. Okay. And then that, when we're done viewing that, we can just close that object. If we want to look at it again, we can just come back over here and click on matrix and so on. Um, so a vector is just a single row of, of um, values, in this case, a numerical vector. A matrix is two-dimensional, so there's rows and there's columns. But all of the information within a matrix will be um, similar values, maybe measuring a, a single attribute. Um, the extension beyond that, if you have data from multiple attributes that you want to store in a table, we typically refer to those in R as a data frame. And so we can create a data frame. So create a data frame. And here we can call this thing T. And we'll use the data.frame function. And we'll say x is going to be equal to the following values concatenated 11, 12, and 14. Uh, then say we want to add another um, column, which we'll call y. And that's going to be 
it will contain the values 19, 20, and 21. And then we might have a third column called Z, where we want to put in the values 10, 9, and 7. And then we can run this line of code. Notice we don't have to highlight the entire line of code. You can just click anywhere on this line of code and hit run. If you want to run again the most recent line of code, you can click this rerun. And if you want to run everything that's in your open script, you can push uh, source and uh, source will, will run everything that's in, in the script there. Okay? So we've got this um, item uh, that we call T. Notice over here in the environment that we have three observations of three variables. And so and the way that the environment interprets data is to first give you the number of rows, so three observations, and then the number of columns, three variables in this case. And we can click on T and it opens here and there's X, Y, and Z, our first observation, our second observation, and our third observation. And that's a very basic data frame. Most of the time you'll be reading in your own data frame and we'll get to that later on uh, in the semester, but I think it's important early on that you recognize the difference between a vector, a matrix, and then a data frame. Um, and then the, um, one, one other useful way of storing data in R that I'll share with you is the idea of a list. So we can say create a list. So notice in this object T that we created, uh, the length of X is three, the length of Y is three observations, the length of Z is three observations. But sometime, sometimes you may have data that uh, each of these vectors may be of different lengths and that won't fit nicely into a complete data frame. And so when you wanna store related data of unequal length, a list can be useful for doing that. So we'll, so we'll just create a list here. We're gonna call this thing capital L use the left arrow. Uh, we're going to use the function list. We're going to have um, an object one equal to the number one. We'll have an object two equal to um, let's see, two equal to concatenate one and two values. Um, and then maybe we'll have something called five and we'll create a sequence using the seq function. And that sequence is going to run from zero um, to one um, with a length equal to five, okay? And so if we run that, now notice in the environment, we have this thing called L that's a list of three. We can click on this little drop down here and we can get a summary of what's there. So the um, dollar sign you can use in R to denote a column within a data frame or a list. So we can say L with the dollar sign to denote the um, object one. And it tells us that it's numeric with the value one. Uh, two is numeric with um, two uh, objects in there. Or, or two values in there, and that's one and two. And then five is numeric, it runs one through five. Uh, and because we had the sequence run from zero to one, it just takes that and divides it into uh, equal parts e uh, that are equal to the length that we specified over here, okay? And then of course you can also click on L to have a look at that list. And notice now um, the lengths of these are differ different, but we can still store them together as a single object, okay? So um, as you're moving into using R to store data and to prepare data for analysis, understand the difference between a vector, a matrix, a data frame, and a list will be pretty critical. Um, the last thing that I'll show you in this quick tutorial is just how um, plotting works with this uh, dedicated plot window down here. So we can annotate our code and we can say, uh, we're gonna create a, um, a histogram. So we're going to create a histogram of a normal distribution. And to do that, we can just use the hist function. We can do random normal distribution. That's R-N-O-R-N. -R we can open that and we can put a hundred 
values in there. So it's going to create a normal bell-shaped um, distribution of random numbers um, for 100 observations. And so we can run that. Notice it ran into the console. And our plotting window has, uh, it shows a default title as a histogram of our norm. It's a mean of zero. And then notice it's normally distributed. So this is just um, values centered around zero and then the frequency of each of those values. And notice that that plot was created automatically by RStudio in our plot window. Uh, and we can zoom in on that if we want to have a closer look at it. We can resize this window and uh, notice that the text um, automatically resizes for you. Um, you can export the, that plot. You can save it as an image or you can save it as a PDF or you can copy it onto the clipboard. Um, and then if you want to clear the plots that are there, if you have um, a, the current plot that you want to remake and you want to remove it from the history of the plots, you can remove that current plot on there, okay? So there's a very brief introduction to the RStudio layout. Uh, in our next uh, lecture, we're going to dive into uh, doing some more complex coding within this RStudio framework.